First of all, as I usually do every morning, also this morning, when I wake up and I open my eyes, I would like to thank the Lord, the Virgin Mary, who made my parents' hearts met, my most beloved saint mom, and my most beloved dad, really her most worthy spouse, for the gift of life, which is really all. I can tell you, I would not be here with you if I had not been loved so much. Life is really the greatest, the most important, the most precious, and the most sacred gift we always ought to honor, respect, and defend. Then I would like to thank His Eminence, dear Cardinal Burke. He knows he is really a father for me. I would like to thank Thomas, friend, dear friend Thomas, in particular, for helping me to spread the devotion of mom, thanks to St. John of Physician Guild. And then I would like to thank all of you. It's a great joy and honor for me to be here at this important conference on marriage and family. And since I am in the United States, I would like to open my testimony with a wonderful letter that my dad wrote to my mom just from the United States. Thomas this morning said that while my mom was waiting for my sister Laura, my dad had to have a long trip in the United States, one month and a half, many days. It's true that this was a big suffering for mom, but also a big suffering for dad. Dad, mom was not alone because during this long time, she moved in the home with her sister and brothers, with my brother Pierluigi and my sister Mariolina. My mom was always very worried when my dad has to take the airplane. In America, you have big distance, not possible for dad to take the train. And so, in this wonderful letter, dad also wrote a beautiful prayer, the prayer of my flights. In the first part of this letter, since my mom loved the nature very much, dad described to mom the beautiful Grand Canyon. Then uh, he wrote this prayer of my flights. New York, May 31, 1959, Sunday, 1.50 post meridian, Mountain Standard Time, 8.50 post meridian Italian time. My most beloved Gianna, I am flying in a beautiful sky at an altitude of 6,000 meters above the Rocky Mountains and the Grand Canyon of Colorado and Utah. It's a sight I will never forget. Eroded mountains rising straight up from the rivers and valleys, rivers which were the Rockaway and snake through it, green rivers and blue lakes, rocks which go from yellow gold to scarlet red and to dark red and copper. It's a powerful sight that I never expected. And in this sky, and above these rocks, which at times break down into a desert of red sand, and we speak more than ever of the power of the providence of the Creator. I repeat the prayer I say when I fly. I begin at this moment, when we are between the heavens and the rocks, and I am looking at the marvelous pictures of you and our treasures, which I kiss up here in the heavens. Jesus, who created me and preserved me with graces and blessings without number. You, who among the long flights of time and of today, up here in the heavens, have given me the immense gift of a wife of gold. Just as the more marvelous down, which can only be admired from up here, and of two treasures who are as splendid as the sky in its full brightness, which one can only be embraced from on height. You, who will soon give us again the divine gift of another treasure. 
Listen to my prayer. Bless Jana and our treasures. Change into grace their anxiety and worry over my long absence and my flights. Please hear today and always the prayers of Jana, of my Gigetto, of my mother, and of all those who love me. Look upon my Mariolina's little folded end. Grant me the grace of a happy return and grant that I may advance always in your ways at every moment, just as the plane flies right on course, safe, directed by radio. May I always have a holy fear of you, the kind one can fill up here, where I am untrusting more than ever to your divine providence. Sustained on the wings of the prayers of Jana, of my treasures, of my mother, and of all those who pray for me. Grant that a serene and luminous atmosphere may always unfold our family, like the atmosphere in the sky through which I am flying, and the purity of the clear air I am breathing. Grant that the clouds just came over us and quickly leave us alone, like the little clouds up here. Keep my family and my dear ones safe, happy, and peaceful in your ways and in your light. Today and always, until the day, we will fly up, up, always higher, up to you. Amen. Beautiful. My mom. <laughs> I mean that my mom, when she received this wonderful letter, she answered these words to dad. You really are the dearest and most affectionate little husband, a saintly papa, not of gold, but of diamond, the biggest and most precious one there is on this earth. What can I say? Mom was just right. Really, Dad was a saintly pup of diamond. Thomas, this morning, said that I left my work to take care of my dad. In January 2003, at that time, Dad was 90 years old. He was very active. He started to have serious health problems. It was necessary the doctor 24 hours a day to take care of them at, of, of him at home, as he would like. Among the reasons why I made this decision are as follows. If God's will had been different, there would have been my mom besides him instead of me. Keep him always near him. I felt that this would have made my mom happy too. It was like doing something for her as well. And then dad was really the biggest treasures I had on this earth, earthly life. He has always loved my brother and me so fondly. He has always been so very close to us in good and in bad times, in moments of trial, difficulty and sufferings. And so I have really the joy, the grace and the privilege to take care of him for seven years and three months until when God called daddy in paradise. Only Saturday, April 3, 2010, at almost 98, with a very lucid mind, till the very last day of his long life. I can say you that just during these seven years, I learned still more about my saint mom through my dad. An American priest, very devoted to my mom, after having read the review titled Jana Smile of God of the years 2010 and 2011, I have dedicated to the memory of my dad, wrote me these words. You have told all when you wrote at the page number five, and the knowledge of daddy's figure helps us to know still better mom's figure. In our Christian anthropology, men and women, husband and wife, are complementary. They need each other to reach their complementary and to become a more complete man and a more complete woman. Without your father, your mother would not have become the woman, the saint she has become. 
She would have liked, liked something really precious and unique. In St. Gianna Beretta Mola, we can find the influence of her dear Pedrin. My mom called that Pedrina, named Peter, Pedrin. Your father was really a holy man. Well, what I would like to, to say, some words about uh, mom and dad's li lives before they meet each other. Both of them was, were blessed from two deeply Christian parents. Both of them belonged to big family. Mom was the tenth of 13 children. That was the fourth of eight. And both of them, I think, was already on the way towards the holiness before they meet each other. Both of them, since when they were a child, put Jesus in the center of their life. Both of them had a great devotion to the Virgin Mary. They prayed the, their daily rosary. And uh, both of them dedicated a lot of their time to the apostolate. My mom in the Catholic Action and in the Conference of the St. Vincent de Paul Society. Also dad, in particular, when during his youth, dedicated them to the apostolate. But he was very, very humble. He always told me, in comparison to mom, I did anything <laughs> in the Catholic Action. Because mom had also a um, very important position in the Catholic Action. And, uh, well, both of them prayed a lot during all their lives. And in particular, when my mom discovered that her vocation could be the vocation to the married life, because as you know, in the first moment, she thought she has to go to Brazil to help one of his brother, my uncle, Father Alberto, Friar Capuccinos and, and doctor in Brazil. Uh, she, she thought she has to go there as lay missionary to help my uncle as a doctor, but mom's body was not so strong to face the equatorial heat. And so her spiritual director convinced mom that if the Lord would like that mom go, uh, would go to, uh, to Brazil, he gave her the help necessary to go there. So since she has not this good health to go there to face this equatorial heat, this doesn't mean that the Lord would like another vocation for mom. And uh, what she, she did, she went to Lourdes at the age of almost 32 years old. I underlined the age of mom. She was not on hurry. She went on to pray, to be sure what the Lord would like from her, from her life, to be able to serve the Lord in her best way. She went to Lourdes to pray to the Virgin Mary, to let her meet the man who, had, who would become her spouse, or her spouse. My dad, my dad, well, I would like to underline a, an aspect. Mama, during her life, had also many sufferings. When she was 15 years old, she lost her mayor sister, Amalia, who was 27 years old. At the age of 20 years old, mom lost her parents. Her mom and four months and a half later, her dad. When, so when mom married my dad, she has no parents. My dad, my dad was 10 years more than mom. He was a mechanical engineer. When uh, he met mom, he was the temporary director of a very big matches factory who gave work to almost 3,000 workers. You can imagine the big responsibility that dad had. Of course, he was not the owner of this company. There are other owners, but he served as temporary director. Before to meet mom, dad had his parents, mom and dad, and the three younger sisters. One of them was a religious sister. He dedicated the most of his time to his work, to, of course, to his faith, to his love for her parents, her sister, or neighbor. And that vocation has, uh, was always, has, uh, has always been the vocation to the married life. And also that uh, pray to the Virgin Mary to let him meet a holy mother for his children. The, this was the prayer of my dad. Thanks.
thanks to the Virgin Mary and the divine will of God, finally their wonderful hearts and souls could meet at last because mom and dad already knew each other five years before this. And my dad was an extremely reserved and shy person. In fact, my mom was the first to declare her love to him. Incredible. I always told to dad that fortunately mom was not so shy like you. <laughs> in, her ver in her very first letter to dad, 21 of February, 1955, Mama wrote to Dad, this picture is a picture during their engagement, engagement time. Dearest Pietro, I really want to make you happy and be what you desire, good understanding and ready for the sacrifices that life will require of us. Now, there is you, whom I already love and to whom I intend to give myself to form a truly Christian family. Ciao, dear Pietro. Pardon my familiarity, but that's how I am. Arrivederci with affection, Gianna. I can imagine the infinite joy of my dad. The day after this, he wrote to mom, I love you, my dearest Gianna. I could not have received a greater or more ardently desired grace from our heavenly mother. Our Lady of Good Counsel, as she's invoked in my little church in Ponte Nuovo. My love is yours, and I want to raise a family with you. I too want to make you happy and understand you well. Forgive me for not beginning a closer confidence sooner than I did. Thank you for your help and trust. With all my love, Pietro. They truly lived their engagement time as a time of grace, with great joy and the deep gratitude to the Lord and to the Virgin Mary as they pray to them for their future family every day more and more. They were ready to face life sorrows too. In a letter that mom wrote to dad, wrote these words, my dearest Pietro, it's true, there will be sorrows too. But if we always love each other, as we do now, then with God's help, we'll know how to bear them together. Don't you think so? For now, now, let's enjoy the happiness of loving each other. I was always told that the secret of happiness is to live moment by moment and to thank the Lord for all that he in his goodness, sends to us day after day. And to mama proposed to dad a triduum to prepare spiritually to receive the sacrament of marriage. Holy Mass and Holy Communion in the three days before their wedding day in two Marian sanctuaries. And he wrote to dad, the Blessed Mother will unit our prayers desires, and because strength is found in unity, Jesus can tell, but listen to us and answer our prayers. I am sure you, you will say yes, and I thank you. My dad, welcome with all his enthusiasm, what he defined my mom's holy suggestion. And I remember that dad told me, Mom was already 32 years old. I was 42 years old. We would like to have many children with God's help and blessing. And so our engagement time was not very long. And uh, <laughs> we decided to get married after some, some months of engagement. And uh, two weeks before their wedding, Dad wrote to Mom, dearest Jan, you and I have undertaken our new life with the certainty that God wanted us together. These moms have all been a crescendo of understanding and affection. Now we understand each other perfectly because heaven is our light and the divine law our guide. Because heaven and the divine law find in you the most beautiful virtues and the greatest good. 
while I have the greatest desire and the immense joy of making you happy, of making you happy always. Now our love is full because we are one heart and soul while feeling and love because our love, strong and poor, knows how to wait for the blessing of heaven. And mom, mom, I, I have reflected a lot of time on this letter of mom. She answered to that, dearest Pietro, I am sure that you always make me as happy as I am now. And that the Lord will listen to your prayers coming from a heart that has always loved him and served him in a saintly way. Pietro, how much I have to learn from you. You are such a fine example for me. And I thank you for it. With God's help and blessing, we will do all we can to, do, uh, to make our new family a little cenacle where Jesus will reign over all our affection, desires, and actions. My Pietro, our wedding is just a few days away now, and I feel very moved to be so near to receiving the sacrament of love. We will be working with God in his creation. In this way, we can give him children who will love and serve him. Well, they got married in the Basilica of Magenta, the city of Mam in the same church where she was baptized, 24 of September, 1955. One of the brother priest of mom, Father Giuseppe, blessed the engagement of mom and dad and also the marriage. And after their marriage, mom and dad prayed a lot, the Lord and the Virgin Mary, for receiving the so eagerly awaited gift, giving gift and grace of children. In a letter that dad wrote to mom, the first letter after their wedding, dad wrote this beautiful prayer. Dearest wife, last night at every joyful mystery of the Holy Rosary, I had a special prayer for you and our, for our new family. May the Lord and our heavenly mother bless our love and render it fruitful. Hasten the day when Gianna, happier than she has ever been before, can share with me and our loved ones the holy news that a new life stirs within her. After this Christmas, may the Christmas is to come, see our children praying before baby Jesus. O Lord, O Heavenly Mother, give us the grace and joy of bringing our children to your altar and consecrating them to you. O Lord, keep us always vigilant like the Holy Family of Nazareth to give our children a holy education. Their prayer, well, listen, Mom gave birth to Pierluigi, my big brother, six years more than me, one year later to Mariolina. As you know, Mariolina, she had five years more than me. God's will wanted that two years after Mom's death, she reached mom in paradise at only six years old. Streptococcus bacterium caused nephritis, acute glomerulonephritis and kidney failure. For my dad was terrible. The spouse and then Mariolina. And then after Mariolina, mom gave birth to my sister Laura. Along with their conjugal and family life, my mom and my dad made concrete and fully realized during all their engagement time, their aspiration, desire, and promises, always living in God's grace with his blessing and continuously doing his holy will. They always live their love in the light of faith, and they really, they truly live the sacrament of marriage as a vocation and as a path towards holiness. As I, I transcribe that letter to mom, which were, were published after his death. When dad was alive, he was so reserved that he didn't want his letter to mom were published. So the whole letter, also the letter of, of dad to mom were published, also in the United States are published in English after dad's death. And while I was preparing this letter, I understood completely that their love was so great, profound and true, and could only be so great, profound and true, 
because the Lord and our Heavenly Mother were always present. They were an integral part of their love, such as they were already an integral part of their whole lives, also before they meet each other. And there are many aspects of my parents' marriage that profoundly enlightened me and moved me, including their deep faith and unwavering confidence in divine providence. Their deep humility, I think that the humility is the fundamental virtue to become a saint. The humility, I think, is the fundamental virtue for all the other virtues. And their infinite mutual love, which made them more serene and stronger. I am also deeply touched by their immeasurable love for us, the children and their family, their reciprocal continuous communication and support. While that was here in America, almost every day they wrote each other a letter. And their intense and constant prayers, how much they prayed to thank God and the Virgin Mary and their love and charity towards their neighbors. Well, dad told me that mom would like to give a brother to my brother Pierluigi. Despite the risk a new maternity implied for her, mom had always difficult pregnancy. After my sister Laura, she had two miscarriages, so I am the sixth child, the sixth pregnancy of mom in six years and half of marriage. How much mom and dad love life and were open to the life. What's happened during my pregnancy? As Thomas said this morning, at the end of the second month of my pregnancy, at mom was diagnosed a yuk fibroma, a benign tumor in her uterus. I underlined that mom had a benign tumor. In fact, doctor told to mom, Jana, you can choose between three possibilities. The first one, if mom chose an hysterectomy, that told me she could live 100 years, of course, with God's help. No risk for mom if she had hysterectomy, but of course she could not have other babies. To remove with a surgery the fibroma and with, with an abortion to put an end to my pregnancy with the possibility to have other babies. This was the safest solution <coughs> for mom during my pregnancy, but not perhaps for the future. The first possibility to remove only the fibroma. This was the risky solution for mom. Why? Why? Because the surgery necessary to remove the fibroma would leave a scar that could break going on the pregnancy with a mortal risk for mom and for the baby was me. Well, really, mom implored the surgeon to remove only the fibroma. And the Lord saved my life. And mom thanks the Lord. My dad respected mom's decision. I underline these aspects. Another husband could say, no, Jana, sorry me. Don't uh, leave me alone with the children. And, and so mom, dad testified that mom went on living the seven months before the delivery with an, an uncomparable fortitude and unchanging engagement as a wife, as a mother, and as a doctor. She practiced as a doctor until few days before the delivery. Of course, she always prayed to the Lord to save also her life, not only my life. But two weeks before the delivery, she was ready to give her life for me. She said to my dad, Pietro, if you have to decide between the baby's life and mine, do not hesitate. Choose, and this I require, the, the child. Do save the baby. My daddy, my dad, he felt in duty to respect for the second time mom's decision. <clears throat> and even if could be very painful consequences for him and for us, the children. Since you know that God's will was different, the Lord, after mom gave birth to me on only Saturday, 21 of April, 1962, and after my birth started her agony, since was the Holy Week, together with his Jesus. And she started to have high fever and terrible abdominal pains caused by a septic peritonitis as a delivery complication. And during her agony, she kept saying, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. And since when I was, when I was a child, I have many sense of guilt 
towards my brother because they suffer much more than me. Pierluigi was six, Mariolina five, Laura three years old. I was only a week when mom entered in paradise. And I have also many sense of guilt towards my mom because I know how much she loved life, how much she loved my dad, my brother, my sister. My dad was able to explain to me that mom knew very well that, f for, uh, <coughs> that I am the same rights to life as my brother Pierluigi and my sister Mariolina and Laura, who were already born. She knew very well that in that very moment, she herself represented for me providence tool to come to life. As to my brother and sister upbringing, she fully relied on providence through dad and other relatives. In other words, only my mom could help me in that moment, no other persons. I always think we born not only one time at the conception, unfortunately, is not enough. How many child are conceived and never see the light? We burn a second time, we born, when our life, our mother, our mom, allow us to see the light. And according to God's will, mom and dad live together only six years and half of marriage. Then the Lord asked mom to enter in paradise. A few months after my, my mom's Death. My dad, who was very, very affectionate to my uncle, Father Alberto, the brother of mom who was in Brazil, wrote to my uncle a long letter, a beautiful letter. According to me, is the first beautiful testimony of my dad about my mom. This long letter and with this prayer. Dearest Father Alberto, every day since Gianna ascended in heaven, I have been raising this prayer to the Lord and to Gianna. You, Jesus, you have called my bride and my children's mother among your angels and your saints. Do that also today. My children may grow up in wisdom and grace with you, with Virgin Mary, with their holy mother, with their loved ones and all men in the same way as you grew up with your holy family in Nazareth. And in the same way, their holy mother knew how to bring them up day after day. Preserve them, the mental and physical health, in the same way as their Holy Mother, with the help of your grace and your blessing, was able to keep them with her wise and very loving cares. Grant that my children always, on every day of their lives, can be worthy of the sanctity and martyrium of their Saint Mother. Grant that I may be less unworthy, that is possible to me, of my bright sanctity, and that I may replace her with the help of your grace in the lovingness and guidance of our children. Preserve also me and my children the grace, the certainty, and the indescribable comfort which allows St. Augustine to write as the, his Holy Mother in heaven. When you were alive, I could see you where you were. Now that you are in heaven, I can feel you wherever I am. And you, Jana, help me to carry my cross day after day and to realize God's will in an heroic way that you may get the divine grace to become saints also for our children and for me. Grant that every day may get us nearer you and that every day we may go, we may go up a step of the mystical Jacob's ladder at the top of which you are waiting for us. And grant that when God will call us as well, he can find us worthy to come near, near, near you forever. Amen. What can I say? I lived 48 years of my life with my dad. And I can testify that mom answered these dead prayers. She helped dad to carry his cross day after day and to realize God's will in an heroic way. And when the Lord called him as well, he was most worthy to live with mom forever. When that died, Cardinal Martini, Archbishop Emeritus of Milan, sent a handwritten note to my family with these words. I share grief for engineer Mola's death heartily. He was the consort of Saint Gianna. She will, will have welcomed him in paradise with great joy. 
right when Hester is drawing near. Dad lived 48 years without mom's visible presence. They went on to be one heart and soul, spiritually very united and in communion with each other. The true love, that is the love that which lasts forever, not only one day, is really much, much stronger than death. And although dad suffered so very much during his long life, he still repeated many times to me, eternity will not be enough for me to thank the Lord for all the graces he granted me during my long life, in particular, to be able, the very singular and incommensurable grace, to attend in Rome at Mount's canonization. I show you, this is my mom, my dad with Pierluigi, Mariolina, Pierluigi and Mariolina, in the, on the day of the first birthday of Mariolina, my sister Laura, this is all my family. I am very affectionate to this picture with all my family. And this is Rome, 16th of May, 2004. My dad and me, after the ceremony, Pope St. Jean Paul II, dearest Pope St. Jean asked if we would like to greet the husband of, of the new saint. And uh, was not in the program. He said, uh, the, the ceremony said, only one person can go with, with, uh, with the husband, with my dad, to, to, to the Pope. I said to my brother and sister, I go with dad. <laughs> And so my dad was very moved. I leave them, uh, he, he, thank, he thank Pope St. John Paul II. And when I kiss, I kiss Pope St. John Paul II. And uh, <clears throat> well, after, after dad's death, a lot of people, priests, nuns, legs, from different parts of the world, tell me and write me that God blessed me with two saint parents that mom and dad were two saint spouses and that they prayed to them and asked for their intercession. What a great joy and consolation for me. And I say that moms and dad's leaves are a powerful example for me. And their leaves example deeply permeate everything I do and help me to live a life of Christian witness. What their lives teach to me about the way of the cross. Three years ago, a parish in Milan asked me to go to give not a testimony as I usually do, but to comment the last free station of Via Crucis. I immediately said, I am not able. Is necessary a priest, not me. But they say, don't worry. We would like to know what your mom and your dad's lives teach to you about the way of the cross. It was the first time I reflected on this. I consider both of their lives, both of them, their lives had immense joy, but also immense sufferings, such as the two faces of the same matter. So these are my reflections. My same parents' lives teach me that the way of the cross is certainly the right way I have to follow to be able to reach one day, enjoying paradise joy, God's side joy, and forever. The way of the cross, which is closely connected and indissoluble from the way of resurrection, as our Lord Jesus had witnesses and shown, he's the most uncomfortable and difficult to face as a, as a, woman, a human. However, I think this is the only way which allow us to give a full and complete meaning to our life. As our heavenly mother has well taught us, this way implies our unconditional and continuous yes to the Lord's will, our humble acceptance of his holy will, always and in any way, even when we don't understand it. My same parents live teach me that the way of the cross is certainly the way of joy as well, of the most true and profound happiness, which is the prelude to the greatest and, and most profound joy, to the light in God's eye one day and forever. And even walking along the way of the cross, we can live in the joy when we have the Lord in our heart, when we fulfill his holy will, and when we see every single thing that occur in our life in the light of faith. 
this also leads us to feel the duty to thank our Lord continuous and for all. For each breath of ours, my dad taught me to thank the Lord for each breath I have, for each of his gifts, even for the gift of sufferings. And I, I told you, which is my first prayer in my, in my on, every time I, in the morning I wake up, my second prayer is this. I pray to the Lord, to the Virgin Mary and to Saint Joseph to help me in every day of my life to be unworthy that is possible for me of my saint mom and my holy dad. To be able one day to rejoin to them after purgatorium, of course, to rejoin to them and my, my sister, my and all my dear ones. Not to live anymore, to stay with them forever. And this one, like I almost, I think you are, all, you are all also very tired. A long, beautiful, blessed day today. And I think that my St. Parents' example can enlighten it. The Christian journey of young people's, fiancés, spouses, parents and families, and encourage, support, support and comfort them along life trials, difficulties and sufferings. At the conclusion of my testimony, I would like to say to you that I think that surely in your heart you have prayer intention. It's very difficult that we have not in our heart prayer intention. So I assure you my prayers according to all the intention you have in your heart. And please, I humble, humbly ask you to pray for me and my mission. And I thank you very much for your attention. And with all my heart, I wish you all the best. Thank you very much. <laughs>